Welcome to One Mic Black History. I'm your host, Country Boy. Today's episode is about Hollywood versus black history. In particular, the Netflix movie, The Harder They Fall, which assembles a cast of black actors to play legendary Western figures from across time to tell a fictional story about two groups, the Nat Love Gang and the Rufus Buck Gang. And while The Harder They Fall tells a fictional story that departs from actual historical events, the characters in the story were very, very real. So today we're going to talk about the real people people behind the characters in The Heart of They Fall. And if this is the type of content that you enjoy, please hit the subscribe button and you can find more content like this on my channel and at onemichistory.com. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so at my Patreon page in the description below. But without further ado, let's get started. R.J. Seiler plays the cocky Jim Beckworth in The Heart of They Fall. And Jim believes himself to be the quickest draw in the West. The real Beckworth was actually a mountaineer and explorer that went on for trapping expeditions across the Rocky Mountains. James Pearson Beckworth was born in either 1798 or 1800. The exact date of his birth is in dispute, and a lot of this uncertainty comes from the fact that Beckworth was known for exaggerating and rewriting his own history. But what is known is he was born to a white man, a Sir Jennings Beckworth, and a slave woman in Virginia. He was said to have the features that resembled a Native American man and was born into slavery. His father took him to Louisiana Territory in 1810 and eventually to St. Louis, where he enfranchised him, and afterwards he was regarded as a free Negro. In 1823, Beckworth signed with the Fur Trading Expedition, and the following year, in 1824, he joined the General William Ashley's Rocky Mountain Fur Trading Company to handle the horses on the expedition to the Rocky Mountains. While West Beckworth was known as a prominent trapper and a mountain man, Beckworth began to forge a close relationship with the Crow Indians and the Crow Indians were long known to be friendly to trappers. They apparently welcomed Beckworth into the society and sometime around 1826 to 1828, he completely abandoned American society and joined the Crow peoples. He even married a series of native women, learning the Crow language, their customs, and eventually settled down for almost six years. According to his own testimony, Beckworth greatly impressed the Indians with his strength and skill. He even participated in raids of neighboring nations and occasional white parties. In 1833, he would return to white settlements and would abandon his native wives. Historians suggest that his stay with the Crow Nation was planned by the Rocky Mountain Fur Company to advance the company's trade with the tribe. So when the fur company didn't renew his contract, Beckworth simply left. In 1837, he returned to St. Louis and joined the Missouri Volunteer Force to scout for General Zachary Taylor. He would see action in the Seminole War in Florida, and in 1840, he left the Army and began spending the next decade wandering around the Old West. In 1840, he became an independent trader. Together with other partners, they built a trading post in Colorado. In 1844, Beckworth traded on the old Spanish Mission Trail between the Arkansas River and California. And at the time, that area was controlled by Mexico. So when the Mexican-American War began in 1846, Beckworth returned to the United States and brought along 1,800 stolen Mexican horses with him as a spoil of war. During the war, he would serve as a courier for the United States Army, and by the start of the gold rush in 1848, Beckworth went to California and opened a store in Sonoma. He would then sell the store, move to Sacramento, where he lived as a professional car player. In 1850, Beckworth was credited as discovering the Beckworth Pass, which is a low elevation pass through the Sierra Nevada mountains that helped travelers make their way to California. In 1851, he would improve on the Beckworth Pass using a Native American path through the mountains. The new Beckworth Path would cut almost 150 miles off the trip and spare travelers steep elevation grades and dangerous passes. In the 1850s, Beckworth would start a ranch, a trading post, and a hotel in the Sierra Valley. This was the beginning of the settlement of Beckworth, California. 
in the winter of 1854 to 1855, a traveling judge by the name of Thomas D. Bonner stayed at Beckworth's hotel. And during the night, Beckworth would tell him his life story and Bonner would write it down and would go on and edit material the following year. And he offered the book to Harper and Brothers in New York. It was published in 1856 and was called The Life and Adventures of James P. Beckworth. According to the contract, Beckworth was entitled to half of the proceeds, but he stated he never received a dime from Bonner or the Harper and Brothers Company. In 1859, Beckworth settled in Denver, Colorado territory and started working as a storekeeper once again. In 1864, Beckworth was a guide and interpreter used in the campaign against the Cheyenne and the Apache. He worked for the Frontier Paramilitary Volunteer Militia who was formed to remove native inhabitants from the Colorado territory for white settlers. The Colorado Territory campaign resulted in the Sand Creek Massacre in which the militia killed an estimated 70 to 163 friendly Cheyenne men, women, and children who were camped in an area suggested by them by the previous fort commander and they were flying an American flag that showed their peaceful intentions. Outraged by Beckworth's association with the massacre, the Cheyenne banned all trading with Beckworth. Afterwards, he was well into his 60s and Beckworth was said to return to trapping and abandon American society once again and return to his Crow tribe. It was not long after that he passed away and like his birth, the details around Beckworth's death are very unclear. Some accounts say that he died around 1866 or 1867 around his adopted people and was laid to rest in Crow fashion in a tree platform. Others indicate that he died in Denver in 1867, but a personal friend of Beckworth, a man by the name of William Byers, claimed that the crow poisoned Beckworth and the tribe said that they could no longer trust him because of his involvement in the Sand Creek Massacre, although he could produce no evidence to support this notion. Thank you. This has been the story of Jim Beckworth, and this is One Mike Black History. And if you like content like this, please hit the subscribe. If you like content like this, please hit the subscribe button. Also, if you like to hear, also, if you like more content like this, you can find it in my channel or at onemichistory.com. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so at my Patreon page, at my Patreon page in the description below. And peace.